What's happening, everyone? <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, today, I want to talk about music. And there's so much to talk about in the world of music that, I mean, I'm just going to scratch the surface here, most likely. But, um... <coughs> I just want to talk about music because I don't know I I hope that somehow some way I could turn people on to music that they didn't even know existed or maybe that they knew existed but had no idea how phenomenal it may you know maybe I uh, growing up I listened to whatever was on the radio um, like I like music but I didn't really get super into it I would listen and pretty much what was that whatever was on I didn't really have any preference in music like a particular style at least not till you know middle school high school and in the 90s I graduated in 2000 so uh, I got to have some really good music in my middle school high school years you know we had the alternative scene that was going on and it was a breath of fresh air after that shit from the 80s happened and personally I don't know what the hell the 80s was I was born in 81 and I even then I, I just it seemed like we were in the twilight zone for ten years and all of a sudden we just snapped right out of it. I don't know. It was fucking weird, man. And uh, to see people and like styles and trends and things from them come from then coming back it just rubs me the wrong way. I don't like it. But uh, not all the music in the eighties was bad. I like I mean Again, this is all my opinion. So if I say something's good or bad and I don't specifically say, hey, that's my opinion. Just know that all the shit that I talk about is just stuff that I'd be saying to myself if the camera wasn't on. Except I'm trying to, you know, focus it a little bit better than I would if it was just me thinking out loud. But uh, all this shit's just my opinion. But uh, I really liked the alternative scene in the 90s. And that kind of got me more interested in music. You know, I listened to Stone Temple Pilots and Pearl Jam, Sublime, um, Dave Matthews. Uh, fuck, I can't remember all the people from back then. Alice in Chains, 311. I don't even remember all the people from back then. But, you know, the Grunge Scene, Nirvana, I like them. But anyways, I would go and buy CDs. And I would buy the stuff that I know I liked, you know, but as I would, I would see stuff that was older music, like class, pretty much classic rock stuff for the most part. I would see the albums, the CDs there for sale, but I never wanted to bite the bullet and buy one because back then, even then, it was like 17, 18 bucks for an old CD from, you know, like The Doors or Pink Floyd or whatever. And I don't want to spend that much money on something and end up not liking it, you know, because I just didn't know anything about it. So I kind of just... I, didn't, I don't know, I didn't put much stock into it. Well, towards the end of high school, I discovered weed, and I also discovered Pink Floyd. And a buddy of mine, I don't remember playing the whole album, the Dark Side of the Moon album, or if it was maybe a couple songs off it or what. It, sorry, my TV is out of the way. Or, uh... I heard some songs from the Dark Side of the Moon. I think it was Give Me a Ride Home, and it happened to be playing some of it. And I hadn't started smoking yet, but I knew of um, I knew the Dark Side of the Moon. My dad had that CD at home, too, so I was curious. I'm like, all right, you know, I'll go check it out. I remember the first time listening to it, and I was just kind of... It's because my mindset was based on the stuff that I had previously heard. The alternative scene but there's a just pop music there's always been pop music and the shit you hear on the radio especially in the 80s too you know it was just hearing Pink Floyd for the first time was just I didn't quite know how to hear it you know what I mean I, it's almost like I, my, I hadn't fine tuned my hearing to be able to hear it and go wow you know well over the next few years I fine tuned that hearing and um <laughs> um, <coughs> September of 2000 I was just starting college and I got a computer like a normal modern day computer one that didn't just have a black screen and some orange letters and 
It was a compact Rosario, I believe. And at this time... Damn, what was the name of it? Napster. Napster. Was out and about, and people were using it. I'd heard of it. So, I started thinking, well, shit, why, if I can get this stuff for free, why don't I check out some of this older music? And ironically, I know this is not probably not the case in probably not even most situations, but for me, being able to get access to older music for free has gotten me to go out and buy a lot of it on CD, on vinyl. It's actually I have a pretty nice music collection and uh, if it wasn't for me being able to learn about this stuff for free through things like Napster and LimeWire later on that I, I may never have gotten into it I don't know I would like to think I would have but <coughs> sorry and if anybody's ever wondering what this shit is on my hand keep track of how many cigarettes I have every day because I was smoking about 50 a day like two and a half packs every day for at least the last year, and I've been smoking a pack a day. It's like, kind oh, shit, 20 years? Um, I took a couple years off where I wasn't smoking very many cigarettes, but it's been bad, and I've been trying to get rid of it. So, overnight, I managed to cut it from 50 to half. I've never had more than 26 cigarettes in a day, and that was only a couple occasions. Today is looking like it might be one of them days. I'm, I've already had, actually... Shit, I've had 23 already today. Dang. But, uh, I've had a day I had eight, and a whole day I just had eight cigarettes, another day I had 12, uh, 15 another day, 16 another day. So, it's an improvement. I'm not ready to quit completely, but just definitely ready to cut back, because I'm sure anybody that watches any of my videos has seen me coughing. Apologize. I just, uh, it's a lot of cigarettes, so I'm working on it. Alright, I'm hoping one day I won't be coughing and shit no more. And then I'll be able to breathe them in. My voice won't sound so fucked up when you, you know, sounds all raspy. Because this is not actually how I sound. Well, not how I used to sound. I've sounded like this for a while because I talk a fucking lot. And when I'm at work, either one of my jobs, I'm fucking obnoxious and yelling and making noises and banging shit and clanging. And <laughs> uh, usually after I work my weekend job, by like this last week, Sunday morning, I woke up. I didn't have a voice. I, I couldn't talk because I was so loud the night before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I could barely get a word out, so that's why my voice sounds like shit too all the time. <coughs> Anyways, some music. So I started get. So I started getting into music, uh, older music, around 2000. Fucking bastard. And I started off with uh, Pink Floyd, The Doors. Um, I didn't get to Zeppelin right away. Now, here's the thing about. All the music that I fucking love today, and I don't really care about anything but that music and other shit that I have yet to discover from those eras. But, um, at one point, I did not like it. It wasn't just that I was like, eh, I'm indifferent. No, I just didn't like it. You know, I, younger, like, I really didn't like Led Zeppelin for a long time. But the thing is, I really only heard handful of songs, you know, like a Stairway to Heaven, I still just don't care for that song. It's not bad, I mean, it's something that everybody should fucking hear, but I just, if I never heard it again, I couldn't care less. But, uh, anyways, I started with Zeppelin, no, not Zeppelin, I'm sorry, The Doors, Pink Floyd, uh, shit. Oh, the fuck, I don't even remember, it's been so long, because I don't even listen to classic rock that much anymore. Um, but as time went on, you know, eventually I just fell in love with Zeppelin. I had a, a, for a year, a year straight, nothing but Led Zeppelin. That's all I listened to for a year straight. It just jammed out, and they are fucking awesome. Yeah, they've taken a lot of songs that didn't belong to them, and I don't know if they stole them or why, if royalties are paid or what. I haven't really looked that deep into it, but... They definitely took a lot of shit that wasn't theirs, but normally when I don't like that, like Zeppelin did it in such a badass way that fucking I, I, I actually like them more because of what they took from the blues, you know, and I love the blues. So that actually made me respect them even more because they went and found some great shit and kind of put their own twist on it. People have been covering songs forever, so I don't know if maybe the controversies over there didn't pay somebody for shit. They did it. 
they should people should be honored that they fucking took their songs and made something great out of it. It was literally to me, Led Zeppelin is the epitome of rock and roll. Not classic rock, just straight up rock and roll. Them and Chuck Berry are just rock and roll. That's what they are. And uh so as time went on, I li- listened to more stuff. Uh, I, I didn't like jazz music because I grew up in the '80s, and I thought in like you know in the '90s, I thought jazz was like smooth jazz, like Kenny G. I'm like, fuck that! I don't want nothing to do with that shit. And as I, what I'll get to jazz later. It was weird how I got into jazz. Did not like it at all. Now I fucking I don't know how I ever lived without it, and it's. It's such a different style, the way they structure their songs, that you just, you have to tweak your hearing, you have to want, I think, it's, it's like an acquired taste, I think, I think jazz is an acquired taste, and, but it's like, I tried it, tried it, tried it, just didn't feel it, and one day I turned it on, and I was like, wow, like, how did I ever do without this, and now, it's all so much good jazz, but, I like the bebop jazz, the the mild shit Miles Davis came up with, and some of the earlier big band jazz. Um, but I love that hard bop bebop style, that just that upbeat. I don't like the slow stuff. I don't. I like something I can move to. But uh, anyways, so again, a classic rock, really heavily in a classic rock. We're just tons and tons and tons of people, even people I didn't like. I knew songs from people I didn't like because. I knew, I wanted to know what the shit was that I didn't like so I could talk about it and have a conversation about it and say, no, I, I know who that is, I've heard the song, this is what it means, and I don't like it, you know? <coughs> so, early on to, right about the same time, right about 2000, early on in my musical adventure, that, I mean, I've literally been on like a, a, muse, a, a 20 year musical and I don't know how to play a fucking instrument I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't play a simple drum beat most likely but I know music you know I mean I can hear different horns or different guitars and you give me a couple notes and I'll tell you who it is and I'm um, just a connoisseur of it I guess but damn I hate when I lose my point anyways oh blues music I discovered BB King early on and I've always liked B.B. King. Thankfully, I was fortunate enough to see him six times before he passed away. And, though it took ten years, I'll tell that story another day, it took ten years, I finally got to see him and Eric Clapton play together. And not only was it them two, but Robert Cray and Jimmy Vaughn, who was Steve Ray Vaughn's brother, all of them were there. And just seeing Clapton and B.B., oh my god, it was a fucking one of the best nights of my life. Like, just wild, crazy it felt like we were standing out in a hurricane watching this concert out in the lawn seats. It just, uh, it was amazing, amazing time. And uh, I'll talk about that another time. So, I always liked blues. And even though I like the classic rock, rock and roll stuff, um, blues was always kind of my favorite. I mean, I just, there was just something different about it. But I, I, I listened to more, um, like, not the old, old blues, you know? It was like, maybe, I don't want to know, 60s maybe, or 70s, and like, a little bit newer, you know? That was what I started off on, and I, uh, as time was going on, I went back and back, and I just, I loved it. I love the blues. Now, after about 13 to 14 years of just blues over anything, I finally had to accept the day that funk music took over in my book as my favorite genre of music because it's just fucking awesome. It is awesome. I mean, there's so many James Brown songs, just him to begin with, but Parliament Funkadelic and Sly and the Family Stone and just so many people. And it's like, I, I knew, I've known, always known who James Brown was. Um, I always knew, like, I Feel Good and uh, Papa's Got a Brand New Bag couple songs that everybody knew. Well, down the road, I realized he has just a shitload of music that you don't ever just happen to come in contact with anymore. This day, like, if you don't go looking for it, you'll never know it existed because it's never going to be played on the radio again. 
it just, fuck, I don't even know if it was played on the radio back then, to be honest with you. I'm sure there were some stations back, you know, in the 70s, 60s, late 60s and the 70s that were playing it, but it's just not something you're ever going to run into by accident, most likely, unless you happen to see it in a movie. And even then, movies, like, they might play some, you know, throw a couple of good songs on soundtracks. Might even have a really good soundtrack. But they're not usually, like, that deep cut of songs, you know? They're just, uh... Like, kind of deep cuts. Like, the radio station. We got this... In Chicago, we have a, uh... 971, The Drive. And it's kind of like... It's hard to explain. It's more like, uh... Not, it's classic rock, but it's more... Like, more on the mellow side. There's not as much rock music in there as you might get, like, uh, Jim Croce. And, um... The more mellower stuff sometimes. You get some rock in there and some Skinner and stuff too, but like they got three thousand songs. That's it. Fuck dude. I can sit here and just rattle off at least ten thousand different songs and different artists without looking anything up. I mean if I could come up with that and all they have is three thousand, no wonder the fucking radio station sucks. You hear the same songs all the time. We just lost one a year ago maybe, ninety seven nine, the loop. Overnight disappeared. Uh, what the hell was the other one? One oh, the, shit. There was another one too. I think that we lost as well. Um, still got like one or two, but it's always the same music. And when they go to deep cuts, I'm like, dude, if that's a deep cut, that's barely breaking the skin. I like just, I, I would love if a, a big time radio station around here like that plays older music would let me just have a three hour block on Sunday evenings I would fucking do it for free I would do it for free just minimal commercials at least minimal commercials if not cut them out altogether if possible um but just let me do what I want you know it's like if I want to play a 25 minute song let me play a fucking 25 minute song they're amazing there's so much shit out there it's longer than three and a half minutes. It's just unreal. Grateful Dead. These cats. They were another one for me that was an acquired taste. Man, I tried. I tried. Listen to them again. I was buying the music. I'm playing it. I'm like, eh, it's a couple good songs. on like, the Greatest Hits. Skeletons in the Claws. You know, like, eh, it's... Which, Truckin', to this day, Truckin' still is one of my favorite Dead songs. I have just always loved that song. I don't know why. It's just... A really good song to me. I know it's the greatest hits. I'm one of those people that I don't typically like greatest hits from bands. Um, like Jimi Hendrix greatest hits. Well, the greatest hits, that's the whole point. I mean, there's a few good songs on there. There's, you know, I'm not gonna knock it. Freedom and Voodoo Child and I'm sure there's another one or two, but like The Wind Cries Mary and Hey Joe and Fire and Foxy Lady. I don't ever want to hear those songs again the rest of my life. They're fucking terrible. Even Hendrix didn't like him. He hated playing that shit, but he had to. Because the record labels and the fans are, oh, I'll play fire, you know, and he couldn't stand it either. Because he just wanted to jam. His BBC sessions, unbelievable. It's a double disc, fucking phenomenal. Uh, there's two songs where the drums, I always notice they sound like noticeably different. Like, just way different than the rest of the album. So finally, years later, I'm looking through the little book that they came in the CD, and it's saying that uh, during the recording of this sessions, they had uh, Stevie Wonder was in the same studio over in England, and he found out Hendrix was there and he wanted to come play with him. So this dude has been born, blind since the day he was born. Not only plays the piano, he plays a bunch of instruments. This dude not only was playing the drums on two really good tracks, he sounded better than, way better than the guy that was his normal, the Hendrix normal drum. Amazing. Now, when I hear about people like Kanye West, oh, God, it makes my fucking skin crawl. And I, I love the Joe Rogan podcast. I love it. I like, I've like. i learned so much stuff from the different people on there, but every time I hear him say that Kanye West is a prolific artist, I want to fucking blow my brains up, just so I don't ever have to hear that again. Kanye West, my opinion, his music is fucking garbage. I wouldn't put, I wouldn't piss on it to put out a fucking fire. I really wouldn't. I just, 
Stevie Wonder, that dude is a prolific artist. The dude that's never could see a day in his life could just start pounding away on a drum kit, pianos and keyboards and fucking who knows what else he could play. I know he had at least one album where he played all the different instruments one at a time. So it's not like you're playing with a band you can feel the flow like you have to just play the notes that that one instrument plays and put them all together and made the whole album. I don't know which one it is though. I might have done it more than once, I don't know, but that's a prolific artist. If anybody's ever heard of Fela Kuti, that dude, I'm, I'm willing to bet no, but unless you've seen, uh, I've put a few of his songs in my, some of my videos, that dude is a bad motherfucker. That is a prolific artist. You're talking eight, nine, ten different instruments fluently. I mean, just wonderful. I saw a concert of him. <coughs> I saw a concert where got a big ass band but he comes out there and he's singing and then he goes and does a horn solo then he sits down doing a keyboard solo then he's over doing a drum solo and then he's doing a different horn solo then he's doing a guitar solo the dude is amazing this is one of those guys that I don't think he has a song that's under 10 minutes I think they have an album of his where they shorten some shit down to make you know get more songs on there and shorter bits but his music should not be cut down. If that's what that album is, that's what I take from it. I haven't really looked into it because I don't want to hear a song from it that's only two or three minutes long. So I haven't gotten to that one yet. But um, he has an album called Rofo. Rofo. R-O-F-O. R-O-F-O. All one word. Fight. And it's an album. It's six, 60 minutes long. It has four tracks four songs for 60 minutes and it is one of the greatest albums I've ever heard the title track is the opening track and my god it just fucking jams for 15 minutes for 15 straight minutes he's just jamming upbeat alright what's up baby upbeat horns and just it's unbelievable and a lot of his music I mean he has he's from Nigeria from the 70s and now this dude which I gotta do a whole episode just on James Brown because James Brown revolutionized music completely you know before he created funk music he was huge in the soul music and then says you know I'm tired of this shit let me go uh, let me go make funk music a whole new genre let's just start structuring songs differently than they've been structured before comes up with a whole new way of doing shit and because of him there's people like George, uh, George Clinton with Prime and Funkadelic and Fela. Fela was heavily influenced by American funk music. And he took funk and mixed it with like tribal African music. And made his own genre called Afrobeat. Which there's a whole fucking world of Afrobeat music out there to look into. I, I have barely stuck my toes in the water. And I probably know more than anybody I'll ever meet about just that genre. And uh... Well, hopefully not. I hope I meet people that know more than I do about this shit, because I'll tell you what, it's... I have some of the best conversations I've ever had with myself, because nobody else knows what the fuck I'm talking about. They're like, oh, yeah, James Brown. Ooh, I feel... You know, like, they don't know anything about it. I'm like, no, just get the Ain't It Funkin', uh... Ain't It Funky Now album. It is badass. Damn, that whole album is just fucking awesome. It is awesome. And, anyways, the Fela, oh my god, his music, is, I, I found this one song called Beasts of No Nation, and I don't know why I just put it off listening to it, I see it on YouTube as I'm looking up other songs, 30 minute song, uh, maybe just under like 27 minutes, and I just, just hadn't listened to it yet. When the day came and I finally listened to it, I was like, oh my god, this is unreal. You will never, ever hear something that beautiful on the radio today. Taylor Swift and fucking Kanye West. And I don't really even know that many people that are out there, honestly. I'm proud to say I don't really even know that many names. I'm sure if somebody started telling me something, I'd know them. I've been finding out that some of these people from the fucking 90s are still doing shit, which I... Hey, I don't want to knock them, man. If that's their, you know, that's their lifestyle, that's what they want to do. But it's like I love Tom Petty. I got to see him six times in concert. Some of the best concerts I've ever seen. 
Um, but I don't want to hear his fucking new albums. I want to hear the fucking good shit from back in the day. I don't want to hear a single new song from him. And I respect the guy as an artist. I do. And if he wants to keep making new music, go for it. I just am not interested. And I've listened to some of it here and there. And maybe down the road, maybe 20, 30 years from now, I'll look back and be like, hey, shit, that's really good. But I just, I'm biased against now, you know. And, uh... Yeah, all these people that are out there, they're all fucking, they're assembly line, factory made, so-called artists. They slap them together, have somebody write their lyrics, somebody else come up with their beats, and put them in some videos, and everybody's going, oh my god, look at this guy, or look at this chick, or what? It's all just a fucking facade. It's all bullshit. You know, it's just stupid ass shit that has nothing to do with anything except more stupid ass shit. You know, I believe that, it, that music is a sign of the times. And that back in the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, there was so much going on that there was just, I mean, the music probably fucking practically wrote itself for a lot of these people. Amazing shit came out of that time period. 80s, I like the funk. Some of the blues, kind of even that got weird. Like the Grateful Dead, too. I love the Dead. I'm a Keith Godchild fan. I love the 70s the best. 74 and 77. My favorite show, if anybody wants to know, is uh, February 26, 1977. I don't know if that was the first show. It might have been the first show they did that year. Uh, Swing Auditorium. It was my first bootleg I ever bought. Now I have, I think my last count was 953 CDs worth. I don't know how many shows that is. It's a fucking lot, but... Uh, I got like shows that are six discs. I got some that are four, or some that are one, some that are two. So just a bunch of Grateful Dead. But that's still my favorite. First time they ever played Terrapin Station, and the first time they played Estimated Profit. And I don't think, as far as I know, there's never been another time that I've seen personally. There may have been, but at least when Jerry Garcia was live, I don't know if they ever opened a show with Terrapin Station any other time other than that show. That's how they started the show off, you know. And I, they still, uh, they still went on and did like you know their first sets usually a little bit shorter songs. They don't always blend together, and you know they kind of get some covers and stuff in there. And then the second set they just fucking trip out. But they opened it with Terrapin Station. I was really impressed. And uh, they had the funky 76, 77, 78 dance in the streets, which is just fucking funky as shit. I love that version. And uh, Eyes of the World, one of my favorites, too. I had a... Uh, <clears throat> I had a version of Eyes of the World back when I had Napster. It was about seven minutes long, and it cut it off. And that was 2002, I think, I, actually, when I got that song. And I spent quite a few years looking. I think it took to about 2009... Um, I was trying to find that exact version. I thought I almost found it a couple times. I, I thought it was the Swing Auditorium when I first when it first came on. I was like, oh shit, this might be it. And I'm like, nah. And I didn't have that original copy on that CD from fucking years and computers ago. I don't even know what happened to that original one that I burnt. So all I had was just the memory of this song. And one day I, I happened to have Dick's Picks 12. Uh, I just grabbed. I was. Hang out with this girl. I grabbed disc number two, threw it in, and I believe that second disc opened with Eyes of the World. And the fucking second that song started, I was like, that's the one. That's the one. And it was definitively the one I spent quite a few years trying to find. And just by fucking chance, I mean, having, you know, almost a thousand CDs worth their music, I mean, you're bound to run into it sooner or later. But there's a lot of stuff I haven't ever listened to, like the 80s stuff. I haven't gotten too deep in it. I like some of the songs from the 80s, but uh, I just, the 70s, that was my favorite time. My favorite time. Um, this is about to cut me off here soon. So, anyways, uh, Fela, badass, fucking phenomenal. James Brown, Ain't It Funky Now, the whole Ain't It Funky Now album. And there's a song called Use Your Mother. That song is just so upbeat and awesome. God, I want to keep going on. It's getting late, and it's a work night, and I got to get up early tomorrow, so I'll probably just do another one later. I don't think I'm going to do a second part tonight, but uh, 
I got so much to talk about music. I hope somebody out there fucking cares to hear any of this. I hope I can get somebody to turn on to something they didn't know before. Um, Miles Davis, there's a song called It Ain't Necessarily So. Badass song. If anybody wants to check that out. The Fail of Rofo Rofo Fight. Check that album out. It's unbelievable. Beasts of No Nations from Fela. F-E-L-A is his first name. K-U-T-I is his second name. And uh, look him up on Wikipedia or I didn't read about this dude. He was fucking unbelievable. He tried to be... He ran for president of Nigeria. The Nigerian government tried to assassinate him unsuccessfully. He had a lot of protest music. That's what most of his music was about. And a lot of it is in English, though, so... Most of it you can understand. There are some other Nigerian words and things he throws in there, but uh, a lot of it's understandable. And shit, I just got so much to say about music, and I see that timer ticking away, so I'm just not going to be able to get to it. Uh, Swing Auditorium, 226.77. It's on YouTube. Unbelievable. I'm fucking, I'm still waiting for them to uh, make like a Nick's Picks or Studio release of it. The Egypt album. The one they came out with, I've had the bootleg since, well, years before they came out with the album. So I actually have the two full shows that they did on bootleg burn CDs. I got some like, different band members, like God Chow and Midland joined a band. They had rehearsals together. I have rehearsals for different albums, which is not the outtakes. It's just rehearsals where they're practicing and playing acid tests I have recordings of. God, I got so much cool stuff from them. But, uh, I don't know. A lot of people like the Cornell show the best. Dick's Picks 10, I heard, also is another deadhead favorite. But, uh, Swing Auditorium 77. They only played there one more time in 78. Do you think I would listen to that show? Maybe it's the vibe of that place that made it so good, but I had never listened to the 78 show from there. I think I have it, too. One of these things, I get all my CD books. I have a stack, no kidding, this tall of just shitloads of CDs. Mostly Grateful Dead, but got a whole bunch of other shit. And uh, I don't know how long it's going to go, so it doesn't cut me off. Y'all have a great night. Take care. And uh, I'll try to get back on tomorrow and do some more because I got so much fucking stuff talking about music. And film, I'm going to get into film eventually too because there's a lot of old school film. They'll never make shit like that ever again. That's why it's called the golden age of film. But anyways, y'all have a great night. Talk to you later.